My name is Emma, and once upon a time, I thought I had the fairy tale life most people only dream of: a caring husband, Mark, who was a successful businessman, a comfortable home, and a supportive family, or so I thought. It was a quiet Sunday afternoon. The sun streamed through the curtains, casting a warm glow on the hardwood floor. I was in the kitchen baking chocolate chip cookies, the family favorite. The smell filled the house. A sweet aroma that would usually bring everyone running to the kitchen. Mark, could you come here and taste the batter? I called out. Mark sauntered into the kitchen, a casual smile on his face. You know I can't resist your cookies, Emma. As he dipped his finger into the batter, I couldn't help but smile. This was the life I had always envisioned, full of simple, loving moments. Oh, it's perfect, Mark declared after tasting. As always, I beamed. Great. These will be ready in about twelve minutes. Enough time for a quick coffee. Ah, you read my mind, he said, winking. While the cookies were baking, I decided to clean up a bit. My phone was charging next to Mark's on the kitchen counter. As I picked up my phone to put it away, I noticed Mark's phone light up. A new message from Lisa, my younger sister. I froze. It wasn't unusual for them to text. After all, Lisa was family. But something deep inside me urged me to take a closer look. Perhaps it was the way Mark had been slightly distant recently, or maybe it was Lisa's nervous laughter the last time we all had dinner together. My hands shook as I picked up Mark's phone. The message preview read: "Last night was amazing. Can't wait to." My heart pounded in my chest. A myriad of emotions swirled within me: confusion, disbelief, and a rising tide of anger. Before I could contemplate the morality of my actions, I unlocked his phone. We knew each other's passwords, a sign of trust, or so I had believed. Scrolling through the messages, the illusions of my perfect life shattered into a million pieces. Explicit texts, pictures, plans to meet up. The whole sordid affair laid bare before my eyes. They had been seeing each other for months. Hey, what are you doing with my phone? Mark asked, walking back into the kitchen, coffee in hand. His tone was light, but his eyes narrowed the moment he saw his phone in my hand. You should have changed your password, I said, my voice ice cold. Mark's face turned pale. Listen, Emma, this isn't what it looks like. Really, because it looks like you've been sleeping with my sister. Would you like to clarify? We we didn't mean for it to happen, Emma. It was a mistake, a mistake that happened multiple times over months. My voice trembled, but I was determined not to cry. You've destroyed this family, Mark. Mark sighed deeply, running his hands through his hair. We need to talk about this, Emma. Let's sit down and I cut him off. No. There's nothing to discuss. You've made your choice, and now you'll have to live with it. I'm done, Mark. As I left the room, I felt an odd mix of devastation and relief. My life had just fallen apart, but for the first time in months, the fog of uncertainty had lifted. I was going to confront this nightmare head-on, no matter what it took. And that was the moment when the old Emma died, making room for a new, stronger version of me. A woman who wouldn't take betrayal lying down. Little did I know, fate had even bigger plans for me, and that's how my journey began on a path that led me far away from the life I once knew, into a world of hurt, self-discovery, and eventually retribution. From the outsider's view, it might have seemed like a normal family gathering. Mark, looking sharp in his gray suit, was pouring drinks in the lounge. While my sister Lisa, wearing her favorite burgundy dress, fiddled with the music, the subtle scent of lilac wafted through the air. But inside, my emotions were boiling over, a tempest threatening to erupt. I was determined to confront the two people who had shattered my trust. I wanted answers. I stepped into the lounge, taking a deep breath. We need to talk, I said, voice firm. Lisa looked up, feigning surprise. About what? I think you both know," I replied, glancing pointedly between them. Mark frowned, playing along. "What's gotten into you, Emma? Cut the act, both of you!" I snapped. 
I've seen the messages, the pictures. I know about the affair. There was a brief silence. Lissa looked at Mark, then back at me, her face devoid of any guilt. I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? You think playing innocent is going to work now? After everything, I was incredulous. Mark stepped forward, trying to appear calm. Listen, Emma, I don't know what you think you saw, but... But nothing, I interrupted. I've seen enough. I know everything. The late night messages, the secret meetups. How could you, Mark? And you, Lisa, my own sister? Lisa sighed dramatically. You're overreacting. We're just friends. I chuckled bitterly. Friends. Is that what you call it now? She shifted uncomfortably. It's not what you think. That's the problem, Lisa. I replied, I don't know what to think anymore. Mark tried to interject. We need to calm down and talk this through rationally. Rationally? I echoed, voice dripping with sarcasm. You expect me to be rational after you betrayed me with my own sister? We never meant to hurt you, Lisa murmured, avoiding my gaze. That makes it even worse. It means you didn't think about me at all. The tension in the room was palpable. Mark looked between us, as if trying to find a way out. We should take a step back, Emma. Maybe get some counseling. Try to work things out. Counseling? I scoffed. You think counseling is going to fix this? The damage is done. Trust, once broken, cannot be mended so easily. Lisa took a deep breath. Look, Emma, I'm sorry. It, it just happened. Just happened? I was losing my patience. That's your excuse? You both made a choice. A choice to betray me, and now you have to face the consequences. Mark looked to defeated. What do you want us to do, Emma? I took a moment to consider. I want space. I need to figure things out on my own. Please, Emma, Lisa pleaded, don't shut us out. We can find a way to move past this. I looked at her, my heart heavy. I don't know if I can ever forgive you. You were my sister, my confidant, and you, I turned to Mark, were my partner, my best friend. But now, I don't know who either of you are. The weight of the truth hung in the air, suffocating the room. As I walked out of the lounge, I felt a profound sense of loss. The ties that had bound us, the history we shared, it all seemed meaningless now. I was at my breaking point. But in that moment of despair, I also felt a flicker of determination. I was not going to let this define me. My story was just beginning. The rain tapped lightly on the windows of my childhood room, a soft and rhythmic reminder of memories long past. With the recent upheaval, my parents had kindly allowed me to stay with them for a while. I was surrounded by artifacts of my past, old journals, photographs, trophies, all remnants of a time before betrayal. As I rummaged through an old chest of drawers, my fingers brushed against a yellowed envelope, sealed but never sent. The handwriting was intricate, a stark contrast to the digital age's sterile typeface. The name on the envelope sent a pang through my heart. Cynthia. Aunt Cynthia. A name I hadn't heard or uttered in so long. She had been close to our family until a falling out with my parents over a decade ago. I was never privy to the details, but the divide was so deep that her name became a taboo in our household. Curiosity peaked. I opened the letter. It was dated about three years ago. Dear Emma, I hope this letter finds its way to you, even if years have passed. I'd often think about our time together when you were a child, the laughter and the stories. I know our families have drifted apart, but you've never left my thoughts. I'm writing to tell you that I've moved to a quaint little cottage by the sea in Brighton. The waves soothe my aging heart, and the salty air brings a calm I never experienced in the bustling city. If ever you feel lost or need a retreat, my door is always open to you. Wishing you all the love and happiness life can offer, Aunt Cynthia. I was taken aback. Despite the rift, she had reached out. Maybe it was the raw emotions from recent events, or perhaps it was an impulse. I felt a strong urge to reconnect. Without overthinking, I decided to make a trip to Brighton. I needed an escape, and this seemed like a sign. 
A forgotten connection might be the healing I desperately sought. Brighton welcomed me with its crisp air and calming waves. Following the address from the letter, I soon stood before a charming blue cottage with white trim, seashells decorating the path to the front door. Before I could knock, the door opened to reveal Aunt Cynthia, her silver hair cascading down her shoulders. Time had etched lines on her face, but her eyes, sharp and blue as the ocean, remained unchanged. Emma, she whispered, eyes welling with tears. Aunt Cynthia, I responded, my voice choked. We stood there for a heartbeat, and then she pulled me into a warm embrace, the years of separation melting away. Inside, her home was a haven. Walls adorned with paintings of the sea, the scent of fresh lavender permeating the air, and the sound of a distant piano playing a familiar tune. Over tea, we recounted memories, bridging the chasm of years gone by. When I finally shared my recent heartbreak, she listened intently, her gaze never leaving mine. Oh, Emma, she sighed, holding my hands. Life has a way of throwing curveballs. But remember, every ending is also a new beginning. I know, Aunt Cynthia, I whispered, but it's just so hard. She nodded, it's okay to feel hurt, but don't let it consume you. Lean on the ones who truly care, like you did today by coming here. I smiled through my tears. This reconnection, this rediscovery of family, felt like the balm my wounded soul needed. In Aunt Cynthia, I had found an ally, a beacon of hope in my darkest times. As the sun set, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, I realized that sometimes healing came from the most unexpected places. In the days that followed, I grew closer to Aunt Cynthia. Brighton's tranquil ambience was therapeutic but it was Aunt Cynthia's company that truly began mending the cracks in my heart. We'd walk along the beach, reminiscing about the past and dreaming of the future. She'd often talk about her adventures, and it was during one such conversation that I uncovered a part of her life I'd been completely oblivious to. One evening, as we lounged in her opulent living room with its grand chandeliers and luxurious tapestries, she began sharing stories from her past. You know, Emma, life hasn't always been this comfortable for me. I looked around, suddenly realizing the magnitude of her wealth. Aunt Cynthia, how did you manage all this? She chuckled softly. Hard work, determination, and a bit of luck. I started with a small loan, and from there, built a business empire that spanned continents. I was stunned. An empire? Why didn't I ever hear about this? She sighed. Families have a way of focusing on differences, not achievements, but let's not dwell on the past. A twinkle appeared in her eyes. Would you like a tour of my company's headquarters tomorrow? It's based right here in Brighton. The following day, I found myself in a towering glass building that overlooked the sea. The sign at the entrance read, Cynthia and Co. As we entered, employees greeted Cynthia with warmth and respect showcasing the mutual admiration between the leader and her team. We meandered through various departments, from marketing to product design. It was evident that Aunt Cynthia's touch was everywhere, and her ethics and values permeated the company's ethos. As we stood in her office, which offered a panoramic view of the ocean, she turned to me. It wasn't easy, Emma. Many tried to undermine me, thinking I was weak or naive because I'm a woman. But I never let their prejudice deter me. I believe that when you stand strong in your truth and integrity, the universe conspires in your favor. Tears welled up in my eyes. You're incredible, Aunt Cynthia. A true inspiration. She walked over, placing a comforting arm around my shoulders. It's in our blood, dear. The same fire that burns in me burns in you. Despite your recent setbacks, you've shown resilience and strength. I've watched you from afar, and I couldn't be prouder. A wave of emotion washed over me. Thank you, I whispered. Reconnecting with you, seeing all this, it's given me hope. A belief that I can rise from my own ashes. She nodded with a proud smile. That's the spirit, Emma. Life's trials are merely lessons in disguise. And always remember, you have an ally in me.
Our bond deepened during that visit. Aunt Cynthia's rags to riches journey not only inspired me, but also made me reflect on my own strengths. The universe had indeed thrown a curveball my way, but in doing so, it had led me back to a part of my family that had been missing for years. As the sun cast its golden glow over Brighton, I stood with Aunt Cynthia on the terrace of her company's building, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. Whatever the future held, I knew I had the strength to face it, with my newfound mentor by my side. Months flew by since my remarkable reunion with Aunt Cynthia. Our bond grew with each passing day, and her wisdom became my guiding light. However, life with its unpredictable ways had another twist in store for me. It was a cool autumn morning when the dreaded call came. Aunt Cynthia had passed away in her sleep. The news hit me like a tidal wave. Just when I'd rediscovered this incredible pillar of strength in my life, she was taken away. The funeral was a somber affair, attended by many. It became evident that Aunt Cynthia had touched countless lives. People from all walks of life came forward to share tales of her generosity, her visionary leadership, and her indomitable spirit. Yet for me, it was the intimate moments, the laughter, the shared confidences, and her invaluable life lessons that echoed the loudest. As the last eulogy was read, and the mourners began to leave, a lawyer approached me. Miss Emma, he queried. I nodded, wiping away my tears. Yes? I'm Mr. Grayson, your aunt's attorney. She left explicit instructions for me to discuss her will with you. Confused, I followed him to a quieter corner. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. He cleared his throat, preparing to deliver a revelation that would change my life forever. Your Aunt Cynthia has left her entire estate to you. Her businesses, her investments, her properties, everything. The weight of his words took a moment to sink in. But why? Surely she had other family or close friends? Mr. Grayson smiled gently. She did, but she saw something in you, Emma. She often mentioned how proud she was of your strength and resilience. She believed that you'd not only uphold her legacy, but also use her resources to make a positive impact in the world. Speechless, I sat down on a nearby bench, trying to process the enormity of it all. Aunt Cynthia's trust in me was both humbling and overwhelming. How am I supposed to handle all this? I whispered, more to myself than to him. Mr. Grayson placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. You're not alone, Miss Emma. She has left behind a team to assist you. Your aunt was meticulous in her planning. And remember, she wouldn't have chosen you if she didn't believe in your capabilities. The days that followed were a whirlwind, from meetings with top executives to familiarizing myself with Cynthia and Co.'s operations. Every day brought new challenges and revelations. Yet in every boardroom, every corridor, and every decision, Aunt Cynthia's legacy echoed, reminding me of the enormous shoes I had to fill. One evening, as I wandered through her sprawling estate, I stumbled upon her personal study. Bookshelves lined the walls, filled with classics and journals. In the center was a grand oak desk, and on it lay a sealed envelope with my name. Curiously, I opened it. The familiar, elegant script greeted me. Dear Emma, If you're reading this, it means I've embarked on my final adventure. I wanted to leave you with a personal message. Life is fleeting and material wealth, even more so. But the legacy we leave behind, the impact we have on others, and the good we do, that's eternal. I trust you with my empire not because of our blood ties, but because of the incredible woman you are. Stand tall, remain true to your principles, and always let love and kindness guide you. Until we meet again in another realm, Aunt Cynthia. With tears streaming down my face, I clutched the letter to my heart. This inheritance wasn't just about wealth. It was a testament to trust, belief, and hope. It was Aunt Cynthia's final gift to me, a chance to make a difference to rise from the ashes of my past, and to carve a brighter, better future for myself and countless others. The sprawling mansion echoed with memories of Aunt Cynthia, but the walls also whispered encouragement. 
As the days turned into weeks, a burning desire kindled within me. The past, with its painful betrayals and crushing blows, held lessons I couldn't ignore. My experiences, coupled with Aunt Cynthia's legacy, planted the seed of an idea that could reshape countless lives. One morning, as the sun painted the horizon with its golden hues, I sat down with Cynthia and Co.'s core team. I have a proposal. I began laying out my plans on the massive conference table. The room was filled with expectant eyes. I want to establish a foundation dedicated to supporting and rehabilitating abused women. There was a collective murmur of surprise. Helen, the company's CFO, raised her eyebrows. It's a noble cause, Emma, but setting up a foundation of that scale will require considerable resources and expertise. I nodded. I understand the challenges, but with Cynthia and Co. behind it and with all of you by my side, I believe we can make a real impact. Marcus, the marketing head, leaned forward. Why this particular cause, Emma? I mean, it's commendable, but there are countless charitable causes out there. Taking a deep breath, I locked eyes with him. Because I know the pain these women go through. The betrayal, the shattered trust, the loss of self-worth, I've lived it. The room was thick with silence. After what felt like an eternity, Helen spoke up. Then it's all the more reason for us to rally behind you. Your transparency and strength are commendable. A few more discussions followed. From budget allocation to hiring specialists, we left no stone unturned. The Cynthia Hope Foundation was born. The foundation's opening was an event that the city wouldn't forget. The media was abuzz with stories of the billionaire Harris channeling her inheritance into social good. But the spotlight wasn't what drove me. It was the hopeful eyes of the women the foundation aimed to help. On the inaugural day, as I cut the ribbon to the first center, a young woman named Tasha approached me. Tears glistened in her eyes as she shared her story of escaping an abusive relationship. I'd given up hope, she admitted, but this place, it promises a fresh start. I hugged Tasha, whispering words of encouragement. This is just the beginning. We'll help you rebuild, rediscover yourself, and ensure that you're never alone. News of the foundation spread, and in no time, we were flooded with support, both in terms of finances and volunteers. Women from various backgrounds came forward to share their stories, offer their skills, or merely provide a listening ear to those in need. One evening, as I walked through one of the foundation's therapy rooms, I overheard a counselor named Jasmine speaking with a survivor. Remember, Jasmine said gently, trauma does not define you. Your strength and resilience in the face of adversity do. Inspired by these interactions, I too joined in, organizing therapy sessions, vocational training workshops, and community building activities. We not only offered shelter, but also provided resources for these brave women to restart their lives, be it through education, job placements, or therapeutic healing. Reflecting on the Foundation's early days, I realized the power of channeling personal pain into purpose. The support, the stories of healing, and the community we built became my life's most significant achievement. Late one night, as I sat in my office, a framed photo of Aunt Cynthia caught my eye. A smile tugged at my lips. Thank you, I whispered, for believing in me, for giving me the means to make a difference. Aunt Cynthia might have left the world, but her legacy lived on not just in the business empire she built, but in the lives touched by the foundation. It was more than just a new beginning. It was a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the incredible change one person could make when they chose love and compassion over bitterness. There's an irony in the power of money. It has the curious ability to reveal the true colors of people, for better or worse. Aunt Cynthia's legacy had not only altered the trajectory of my life, but also triggered unforeseen reactions from the very people who had betrayed me. One evening, as the setting sun painted the mansion in golden hues, the doorbell echoed through the grand hall. Jasmine, one of the Foundation's counselors who had grown close to me, happened to be there, 
discussing the progress of the initiative. Opening the door, my heart skipped a beat. Standing there were Mark and Lisa, looking slightly disheveled and uncharacteristic hesitancy in their eyes. Before I could say a word, Mark blurted out, We heard about Aunt Cynthia, about the inheritance. Lisa nudged him, whispering, Don't be so blunt. Turning to me with a forceful smile, she added, What he means is, we've missed you, Emma. It's been a while, and we were hoping we could catch up. The audacity of their approach was staggering. But before my emotions could spiral, Jasmine stepped forward, her presence grounding. Is this a good time, Emma? She asked, her voice subtly reminding me of the strength I'd cultivated. Drawing in a deep breath, I replied, Actually, Jasmine and I were just wrapping up some foundation work. Mark glanced at the opulent surroundings, his greed transparent. It's impressive what you've done with the place. And we, well, we thought maybe we could be a part of it. Lisa, trying to regain some semblance of sibling connection, added, We're family, Emma, and family helps each other out. Jasmine, sensing the rising tension, decided to make a tactful exit. I'll leave you free to chat. I'll be in the study if you need me, Emma. Once she was out of earshot, I faced my estranged husband and sister, taking a moment to choose my words carefully. What do you want, Mark? Why are you really here? Mark hesitated, looking to Lisa for support. She nudged him again, this time more forcefully. We've fallen on hard times, he admitted. Businesses failed, debts piled up. When we heard about your inheritance, we thought. You thought you'd come crawling back, expecting a slice of Aunt Cynthia's legacy? I finished his sentence, my voice cold. Lisa interjected, her voice quivering. It's not like that, Emma. We, we just want a fresh start, and we thought you might understand. My mind raced back to the betrayal, the pain, and the nights soaked in tears. I remembered the crushing weight of their deceit. And yet, standing before me, they appeared more pitiable than malicious. Taking a breath to quell my rising anger, I said, The Cynthia Hope Foundation is doing crucial work. Every penny of Aunt Cynthia's legacy is going towards supporting and rehabilitating countless women. There's no fortune to be shared here. Mark's eyes widened in disbelief. You're using all the money for charity. I nodded. Yes, every single cent. I don't need her wealth. I only need the purpose it's giving me. A heavy silence enveloped the room. Lisa, tears forming in her eyes, whispered, I'm so sorry, Emma, for everything. But it was too late. Their transgressions had etched scars too deep to mend. Goodbye, Mark. Lisa, I wish you well. As they left the mansion, a weight lifted from my shoulders. Their reappearance, while unsettling, only affirmed my decision to channel the inheritance into the foundation. As I rejoined Jasmine in the study, I felt a newfound resolve. Their betrayal had broken me, but Aunt Cynthia's legacy had rebuilt me. Stronger, resilient, unyielding, and I would not allow anyone, no matter their relation, to dim the purpose-driven light that now guided my path. The fragility of the human soul can sometimes be likened to glass. Once shattered, it can be challenging to piece back together. And even if you manage to glue the shards into place, the cracks remain evident, a haunting testament to the trauma endured. A few weeks had passed since Mark and Lisa's surprise visit to the mansion, but just when I thought they'd taken the hint, they made another attempt. It was a quiet afternoon. I was on the patio, going through the progress reports of the women under the foundation's care. The sound of a car engine purred in the distance, and as I looked up, I saw them. Mark and Lisa, walking towards me, a sense of purpose in their stride. In their hands were envelopes. Emma, Mark began, his voice strained with emotion. We know we hurt you, more than words can explain. But we've had time to reflect, and we want to apologize, genuinely apologize. Lisa, looking more vulnerable than I had ever seen her, handed me one of the envelopes. It's not just words, Emma. We've written it all down. Our feelings, our regrets. There was a profound depth to their remorse, but it did little to ease the anguish that still lingered in my heart. 
I took the envelope but didn't open it. What do you expect, Lisa? A written apology to mend the broken trust? She swallowed hard, trying to find the right words. It was a mistake, Emma. A horrible, unforgivable mistake. Mark echoed her sentiments. We lost our way, got swept up in something that we now realize was nothing more than a fleeting moment of weakness. We didn't think about the consequences. I stood up, my gaze steady. A mistake, I echoed, the bitterness evident in my voice. An error in judgment is forgetting to turn off the stove, misplacing your keys, or missing an appointment. What you both did was a conscious choice, made repeatedly behind my back. Lisa's face crumpled, tears spilling from her eyes. It's true, Emma, we messed up, and there's no excuse, but we hope you can find it in your heart to forgive us. I took a moment, the weight of their words pressing on me. Forgiveness isn't something I can grant on a whim. The pain you inflicted can't be undone with an apology, written or verbal. Mark, trying to maintain his composure, pleaded, We're not asking to be back in your life, Emma. We just want you to know that we're sorry, truly sorry. Despite the emotional whirlwind, a part of me acknowledged their earnestness. However, some wounds cut too deep to heal entirely. I appreciate the gesture. I replied, looking at the sealed envelopes. But the damage is done. And while I'm moving forward, finding strength and purpose, and supporting those in need, I can't have remnants of the past clouding my journey. I handed back the envelopes, my decision firm. You both need to find your own paths, learn from your actions, and understand the gravity of the choices you made. But that journey doesn't involve me. The atmosphere grew heavy, the finality of my words sinking in. Lisa, her voice breaking, whispered, We'll always regret what we did. Always. And you should, I responded, my tone unyielding. Because choices have consequences, and ours have led us here. They turned away, heading back to their car, the realization evident that our paths had diverged, perhaps forever. I watched them leave, feeling a mixture of sorrow and relief. As the car disappeared into the distance, the weight of the past began to dissipate, replaced with a newfound determination to focus on the future and the countless women who needed my support. In the heart of the city stood the Emma Empowerment Foundation, an architectural beauty, but more importantly, a beacon of hope for countless women. As I walked through its corridors, I couldn't help but marvel at the transformation not only within these walls, but within the very souls that sought refuge here. One morning, as I made my rounds, I was met by Jasmine, a once broken spirit who had now blossomed into a leading figure within the foundation. Her story was one of resilience, and she had channeled her pain into helping others. Good morning, Emma, she greeted with a beaming smile. You won't believe the progress we've made this week. I raised an eyebrow in intrigue. Tell me everything. She excitedly began, We've successfully integrated five women into local businesses, and they're already reporting how much they love their new roles. The thrill of these successes never grew old. That's fantastic. And how are our new arrivals settling in? Jasmine's face softened. They're scared as expected. But with the programs and support we offer, I have no doubt they'll find their footing. As we conversed, Melanie, a recent addition to the foundation, approached hesitantly. Her eyes, once devoid of hope, now shimmered with a budding confidence. Miss Emma, she began, her voice quivering slightly, I wanted to thank you. Before this place, I felt so lost, so alone. But now, now I have hope. I smiled warmly, placing a reassuring hand on her shoulder. You have the strength within you, Melanie. We're just here to help you find it. Tears welled in her eyes as she replied, I've enrolled in the computer literacy program and I've already received a job offer. Can you believe it? The joy of such transformations was profound. I always knew you could do it. Remember, every step you take forward is a testament to your resilience. Jasmine chimed in, and she's not the only one, Emma. The stories of triumph are increasing by the day. Women are not only finding refuge here, 
but are rediscovering themselves, rebuilding their lives, brick by brick. As we continued our rounds, we met more women, each with a unique tale but a shared trajectory towards empowerment. The foundation had become more than a shelter. It was a phoenix's nest where women, once burned by the cruelties of life, could rise anew. During a team meeting later that afternoon, Rebecca, the head of rehabilitation programs, updated, our outreach program is gaining traction. We're getting invitations to schools and colleges to discuss women's rights and empowerment. The world is taking notice. With a satisfied nod, I responded, that's excellent. Our goal was never just to provide refuge, but to change the narrative, to empower, educate, and evolve. The room buzzed with energy, plans for the future discussed with fervor. We were making a difference, touching lives, and forging a path of change. As the day wound down and I sat in my office, reflecting, the weight of responsibility and the pride of accomplishment settled in my chest. The foundation was a living testament to transformation, not just of the women it served, but of my journey, from betrayal and pain to purpose and triumph. Each woman we helped was a thread in a tapestry of hope, resilience, and empowerment. And as I looked out at the setting sun, casting a golden hue over the city, I knew that the Emma Empowerment Foundation was just beginning its journey of changing lives. The skyline of the city was a canvas of glowing lights and towering buildings, but amidst this prosperity, there was a shadow of despair that was creeping in. Mark's once thriving business was in shambles. The office that was once bustling with activity now echoed with the grim reality of its downfall. Last week, over half the staff resigned. Henry, Mark's longtime friend and business partner, reported with a sigh as he paced the large yet now empty office. Our investors are pulling out, Mark. They've lost confidence in us. Mark rubbed his temples, a gesture he seemed to have adopted frequently these days. How did it all come crashing down so quickly? We were on top just months ago. Henry hesitatingly looked straight into Mark's eyes. Honestly, ever since the news about you and Lisa broke out, our reputation has taken a hit. People don't trust us anymore. Not just because of the personal scandal, but the questions it raised about your integrity and judgment. Mark's face went pale. The weight of his actions, the magnitude of their repercussions, had never been clearer. At the same time, Lisa was navigating her own storm. Once lavishly spending without a care, she was now struggling to make ends meet. The luxurious apartment, designer clothes, and the posh lifestyle were slipping away. Even her close-knit group of friends, who once flocked to her, seemed to have dispersed like birds sensing an impending tempest. Sitting alone in a cafe, she was interrupted by the arrival of Sophie, an old friend. Lisa? Sophie inquired, her voice carrying a hint of pity. Is that you? Lisa, her pride wounded, forced a smile. Sophie, it's been so long. Sophie took a seat opposite her, her eyes analyzing Lisa. I heard about what happened, with Mark and Emma. Lisa flinched. Every mention of the scandal was like a slap across her face. Yes, well, things happen. Sophie raised an eyebrow. You know, we warned you, but you chose this path. I didn't think it would come to this, Lisa admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. Sophie sighed, choices have consequences, Lisa. You and Mark, you both thought of short-term gains, never realizing the long-term implications. Defeated, Lisa admitted, I've lost almost everything, friends, family, money. It's like I'm living a never-ending nightmare. Across town, Mark found himself outside the gates of the Emma Empowerment Foundation. He watched as women walked in and out, their faces glowing with hope and determination. The stark contrast between their rising trajectories and his spiraling downfall was not lost on him. Making an impulsive decision, he approached the entrance. Jasmine, recognizing him instantly, blocked his way. Can I help you? I, I wanted to see Emma, Mark murmured, desperation evident in his voice. 
Jasmine, protective and stern, responded, She's busy changing lives. Something you should have thought about before betraying her. Defeated, Mark nodded and turned away, realizing that bridges once burned couldn't be rebuilt so easily. Both Mark and Lisa found themselves on parallel journeys of despair. They had not only lost their moral compass, but with it, everything they held dear. The cost of betrayal, they realized, was far greater than they could have ever imagined. The whispers of fate had never been louder in the city. Headlines flashed across the front pages of newspapers and dominated television broadcasts. Everyone was talking about it. The dramatic downfall of Mark and Lisa was nothing short of a spectacle. The city's top journalist, Fiona Mitchell, had landed an exclusive. A series of exposes painted Mark as an unscrupulous businessman involved in shady deals and embezzlement. There were talks of him exploiting young entrepreneurs, taking their ideas, and turning them into his own lucrative projects. Sources confirm that Mark had been involved in taking bribes, and there's evidence of money laundering, Fiona announced with a professional smirk on a primetime TV slot. The phone recording she played, which allegedly had Mark's voice discussing dubious transactions, was damning. Across town, Lisa had her own skeletons tumbling out. A former friend and colleague, Diane, came forward detailing how Lisa had sabotaged co-workers to climb the corporate ladder. Stolen project ideas, false allegations against peers, and even corporate espionage, the charges were serious and numerous. Sitting in her expansive office at the Emma Empowerment Foundation, Emma watched the news, her emotions a mix of astonishment and vindication. She had always believed that life had a way of restoring balance. She felt no joy in their downfall, but there was an undeniable sense of justice. Rebecca, Emma's close friend and foundation COO, walked in, holding a newspaper. Have you seen this? she asked, pointing to the headlines. Emma took a deep breath. I have. The universe has its way, doesn't it? Rebecca hesitated, then asked, Do you feel, I don't know, triumphant? Emma looked out of the window, pondering the question, not triumphant, more like reflective. It's a stark reminder of how choices define our destiny. The phone on Emma's desk buzzed. Jasmine's voice came through the intercom, you have a visitor, Mark. Emma exchanged a look with Rebecca, sent him in. Mark looked a shadow of his former self. His confident gait was replaced by a shuffling walk, his attire disheveled. He cleared his throat. Emma, I know I'm the last person you'd want to see. Emma raised a hand to stop him. Why are you here, Mark? Swallowing hard, Mark replied, I came to apologize. I know it doesn't change anything, and I don't expect forgiveness. I've lost everything, and I deserve it. Emma regarded him for a long moment. Your downfall was of your own making, Mark. But remember... Everyone has a chance to redeem themselves. Mark nodded, tears glistening in his eyes. I genuinely am sorry, Emma. If there's any way I can make amends, even if it takes a lifetime, let me know. Emma leaned back, her face softening. Work on yourself, Mark. Become a better person. That's all the amends I'd want from you. As the days rolled on, news of Mark and Lisa's scandals became the talk of the town. They were socially ostracized, their reputations in tatters. Yet, amidst the chaos, Emma remained a beacon of strength and grace. She didn't indulge in their downfall or gloat over their misfortunes. Instead, she channeled her energies into the foundation, transforming the lives of countless women. One evening, as she sat in her study, going over the success stories from her foundation, a soft knock echoed. It was Lisa. Emma, she whispered, her face worn out and eyes tired. Emma remained silent, prompting her to continue. I'm lost, Lisa admitted, but I want to make things right. Maybe not today or tomorrow, but someday. Emma sighed deeply. You have a long journey ahead, Lisa. Redemption isn't easy, but it starts with owning your mistakes. Lisa nodded, tears flowing freely. Thank you, Emma. 
The wheel of karma had indeed come full circle. Those who once stood tall had been humbled, and those wronged had risen, showcasing the power of resilience, strength, and the undying belief in justice. The grand ballroom was abuzz with energy. Glistening chandeliers hung from the ceiling, casting soft glows over elegantly dressed men and women. The night was a significant milestone for the Emma Empowerment Foundation, celebrating its first year of transforming lives. As guests mingled, there were murmurs of admiration for Emma, who had managed to turn her pain into purpose. She stood out, wearing a sophisticated navy blue gown, her confidence evident. The room hushed as Emma made her way to the stage. The spotlight shone on her, but she didn't flinch. This was her moment, a testament to her resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, she began, her voice resonating with emotion, life has a peculiar way of testing our limits. A year ago, I felt defeated, abandoned, and lost. But every challenge, every betrayal, pushed me to discover a strength I never knew existed. Murmurs of agreement filled the room. Many were aware of the tumultuous journey Emma had undergone. Tonight isn't just about me, Emma continued, it's about every woman who has been silenced, oppressed, or abused. It's about rewriting our narratives, reclaiming our power, and rising above adversity. The applause was deafening. Guests exchanged proud glances, their admiration for Emma evident. The success of this foundation isn't my success alone. It belongs to every woman who found refuge here, every individual who supported our cause, and every survivor who chose not to let her past define her future. The evening continued with testimonials from women whose lives had been transformed by the foundation. Their stories were moving, a testament to Emma's vision and commitment. In a secluded corner, unnoticed by many, Mark and Lisa watched. They were uninvited, yet they felt compelled to witness Emma's success. Their faces wore expressions of regret and realization. Their betrayal had not broken Emma. Instead, it had propelled her to greater heights. Lisa whispered, she's incredible, isn't she? Mark, his voice barely audible, replied, we lost a gem. As the gala drew to a close, Emma shared her final words. Remember, living well isn't about revenge. It's about proving to yourself that you're worth more than the pain of the past. It's about hope, healing, and moving forward. Epilogue. Years passed. The Emma Empowerment Foundation grew in scale and impact, becoming a beacon of hope for countless women across the country. Emma's story was taught as a lesson in resilience, a testament to the human spirit's indomitable will. One evening, as Emma sat on the balcony of her sprawling estate, overlooking the city, she felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. The betrayal, pain, and humiliation seemed like a distant memory. They had been necessary chapters, pushing her to discover her true calling. While Emma basked in the success and love she had garnered, Mark and Lisa faced the consequences of their actions. Their reputations never recovered, and they faced financial and social ruin. Their lives were a stark contrast to Emma's, a living testament to the choices they had made. Emma's thoughts drifted to the women she had helped. Their laughter their tears, their stories. They were the true success of her journey. A soft smile played on Emma's lips as she whispered to the winds, thank you for this second chance. Thank you for showing me that the best revenge is to live well. And as the night deepened, Emma felt at peace, knowing she had turned her pain into purpose, her betrayal into a beacon of hope.